Growing your own food is a unique experience filled with many challenges and valuable experiences. Whether you live in an apartment, an urban center, or a rural area, there's always a way for you to grow some of your own food. If you're a beginner, it's important to understand some of the boundaries of this practice, as well as developing a respect for the journey that it quickly becomes. Welcome to New Garden Road, where I share my love of gardening with you in a way that I hope will inform, inspire, and elevate you. Like this video if you like it, and subscribe to get notified for more gardening action. Growing your own food offers mindful moments, quiet thoughts, a grounded connection to the earth, and a deeper understanding of the balance in nature. It's also delicious. If you're able to stay tuned to the end of this video, I'll be going over what you can plant now, as well as sharing some of my favorite resources. All right, so let's talk about what are some of the boundaries to growing your own food. Things like sun exposure, access to water, soil quality, and what about the available space that you have to grow in? as well as your access to plant starts and seeds. If you want to grow your own food, you're going to look for six to eight hours of full sun. The more sun, the better. Direct sun in the morning up through the early afternoon would be optimal. If you don't have a location that's south facing, you're probably not going to get sufficient sun exposure. Some plants can get away with conducting photosynthesis under less light. Some of those would have broader leaves like chard, kale, collards, maybe even lettuce and spinach. But for most of the vegetables that will flower and set fruit, they're going to want at least eight hours of full sun. All right, so think about your access to water, your proximity to a water source. If you don't have a hose bib nearby, how long is that hose going to be? You really don't want it to be over 100 feet. That will be really important as you plant seeds. You're going to need to keep the soil evenly moist until those seeds germinate. And that means oftentimes you're going to have to water them twice a day, maybe even the middle of the day. If you're here in Central Texas, you know the sun is strong and we're getting really warm right now. You may have to water in the middle of the day, so that's up to three times a day. If you're far away from a water source, that can make it really difficult. So take that into consideration when you are choosing your location. What about soil quality? The soil is the secret to the garden. It's all about soil health. Microbiology, beneficial bacteria, structure, good drainage. You need the best soil possible. If you don't have soil, you're going to have to bring it in. When you buy soil from a bulk retailer or buy the bag, buyer beware. They're not all the same. They may say they're premium, top notch, but you really don't know until you get your hands in it. So if you're going to be going deep and investing a lot of money in the soil, make sure that you have a good quality soil before you go all in. If you're going to be planting in containers and using potting soil, it's a completely different structure. If you put soil in containers or pots, it's going to get compacted and sink over time and the roots won't have enough air to really flourish and they'll end up rotting. Get the best quality potting soil that you can get. The soil is the stomach of the plant. What about your available space? You may have a balcony, maybe you got a large scale plot, or maybe you have a backyard where you can put up a couple of raised beds. You want to plan accordingly because it will limit the amount of crops, the size of the crops. There are tricks that you can learn along the way where you can trellis and you can support hanging fruit like watermelons or cantaloupes with some netting. So just think about that as you get started. What about your access to starter plants and seeds? If you don't have those in the area, you're gonna need to get your own and you're probably gonna have to order seeds. You're gonna have to start seeds indoors or you're gonna have to direct seed. That's a whole nother skill set that you're gonna need to learn and invest in. Later on in the video, I'm gonna be talking about some of my favorite resources for seeds. You can buy them online. You can order them direct from these seed companies. If you have a nursery in your area, that's awesome. You're gonna wanna visit them frequently, get familiar with their inventory when it comes in, because they're not always gonna have a full inventory. It will vary throughout the course of the season, and maybe you can get to know the staff just a little bit and find the sweet spot. I always recommend getting to the nursery as early in the morning as possible, right after they open and typically at the end of the week after they've received all their deliveries. We're talking about Friday or Saturday morning, as soon as you can get there and the door opens, get in there and get your plants. All right, one last thing that you wanna think about in terms of what are the overall boundaries to growing your own food would be timing. You can't just plant anything any time of year. This is gonna be unique 
to your specific growing area, look at your county extension service. They probably have a planting guide that could be a great resource to you, but you wanna plant the right plants at the right time. That's gonna make all the difference in the yield and their success. Let's talk about some of the factors that are gonna be outside of your control. Mainly, we're talking about the weather, folks. You're really gonna to have to be aware of the forecast, the long-term forecast. You definitely wanna to get to know when your first and last average frost is. They're also average meaning if it says your last average frost is March 4th like it is here in the Austin area you just need to be aware that you might get a light freeze beyond that date. Set yourself up for success by getting some row cover and being able to put up some structures quickly to protect those crops. Because you can't hold back. Timing is everything. The weather is the factor that you can't control. Like today, it's March 24th here in Austin and we've got 90 degrees. It was 90 degrees yesterday, gonna be 90 degrees tomorrow. That's pretty warm. I've got some seeds just about to sprout and as they do, that's warm enough that they might get a little bit burned. I like to be prepared for stretches of extreme heat because that's what we get here in Central Texas. And so recently I put up some shade cloth to protect some of these tender seedlings. What about extended drought or flooding conditions? Typically here in Central Texas, we go for extended periods with little to no rain. You're gonna have to provide irrigation to your crops. That's why your proximity to water can be critical. If you have flooding conditions, flash flooding in your area, you're going to be really dependent upon a well draining soil. That's one of the key reasons that I like to grow in raised garden beds because I can closely control the soil quality. I have assured that I have good drainage and so when I get these flooding conditions, the water drains sufficiently. All right, now I want to give you a heads up on some things that you should be expecting as you start to grow your own food. First thing is failure. That can be hard to accept if you're a beginning gardener, but you need to understand that it's natural. As you go on this journey and you learn to respect these boundaries, you're gonna understand every failure that you have rewards you with some knowledge. So don't be afraid to fail out in the garden. It's gonna be a mentor to you. One of the other things that you wanna expect is bugs. Bugs are natural, bugs are in nature. Not all bugs are bad. Everything in nature serves a purpose. That's part of the balance. I recommend taking a step back, observing the bigger picture, and don't overreact. You don't wanna kill every bug you see. Think about it this way. If you have some good bugs in your garden, bugs that are pollinators, or they're predatory beneficial insects, meaning they'll eat some of the bad bugs and help you, if you kill them by accident, or on purpose, you gotta do their job. I know you already got a job, so get to know your bugs. You're gonna to have to educate yourself, take some pictures, share it with others, ask questions, go online, do some searching, but you will learn season after season what are some of the regular visitors to your garden, what they are and what they do. Believe it or not, most of them will be there playing a role helping you grow your own food. And also, the healthier that your garden is, the better balance that you're gonna have. Monitor the situation closely, intervene if you need to. After gardening year round for 11 years, I rarely treat for insects in my garden. The most common thing that I might do is use a strong blast of water to blast them off my plants. Otherwise, I might use a soapy water solution like an insecticidal soap. That's a really low level control. One of the other big things that you can expect out there when you're growing your own food would be fungal diseases. Things like powdery mildew or downy mildew, they're really common. And like I said, you can't control the weather and that can be a contributing factor to some of these diseases. You also wanna have good air circulation in your garden. That's gonna be really important as you plan your plantings. If you space them appropriately, you should have an ideal airflow. And that'll make it less likely that you'll get some of these fungal diseases. There are other viruses out there that can attack your plants and a lot of those can be conveyed from humans to plants. If you are a cigarette smoker and you're growing tomatoes, there's the tobacco mosaic virus. You just want to be aware of that. Regardless, make sure you wash your hands really well before you go out into the garden. Otherwise, you could be transmitting some type of virus to your plants. All right, so the big picture here, folks, is you're going to learn as you grow. The garden, the act of gardening, each season will be your mentor. You will learn something new every time. If I tried to convey to you everything that you need to know to be a successful gardener, we would be here for days. There's nothing short of getting your hands in the soil, getting some practical experience, 
and moving forward. You're gonna get smarter, you're gonna learn things. Realize that there are a lot of free resources out there to help you. New Garden Road, hey, I'm here to do it. I wanna mention some other creators that I think provide some great resources to you as a beginning gardener or wherever you are on the spectrum of your gardening practice. Self-Sufficient Me, that's a great one, out of Australia. Joe Gardner TV with Joe Lample, he's a pro, I'm telling you. Check out Learn to Grow in the Pacific Northwest. Tons of great gardening ideas, and I love the way she takes food scraps and grows more food from them. Big City Gardener out of Houston, Texas. Callie Kim, she's out of Southern California. Keep on growing with Mike Van Duzzi. You wanna go the hydroponic route? Mike's in Florida, he can tell you how to do it from top to bottom. Last but not least, folks, Epic Gardening out of Southern California. Great gardening content. All of these creators, folks, I just wanna give them a shout out. Learn as much as you can from each person. They're gonna expose you to new ideas. They're gonna teach you things. It's just gonna evolve. The garden will be your mentor. You'll learn something every season. All right, so here are some of the awesome benefits that you can receive from growing your own food. Fresher and more nutritious food. The food that you grow at home is gonna be more nutrient dense than the food that you buy at the grocery store that's traveled thousands of miles and has been waiting a week or two to get to your home. Exercise. You're gonna be bending, stretching, moving, walking. You're gonna get all kind of exercise out in the garden. Stress relief, we all need that, especially in this day and age, I know I do. I also want to mention habitat restoration and increasing biodiversity. Think about this, as we develop lands all over the globe, we're taking away natural habitat. And in its place, we are substituting non-native species. Oftentimes, we're scraping the soil away and we're adding fill dirt. When you begin to grow your own food, you begin to restore habitat to wildlife. Each backyard, each balcony, whatever scale you grow on, you're gonna be increasing biodiversity. Just think about if your whole community began gardening, the biodiversity that you would produce and how that would work in a cycle to help every single person. There's one more thing that's really special about growing your own food and that's the connection to the place that you live. It deepens your sense of belonging, your home, your community, and that is really important. And lastly, sharing is caring. You wanna share with others. Grow a little bit of extra food and share with your neighbors, your friends, your family, your coworkers. You may have a sustainable food center or a food pantry nearby that needs fresh produce. That could be a great opportunity for you to help in a huge way. Okay, so here's the part that many of you may be waiting for. What can you plant now? Take into consideration, I live in Central Texas and it's zone 8B. I garden by the Texas A&M Extension Service Planting Guide. If you're not in this area, just consult your local extension service. They're probably gonna have a planting guide that can really help you. And it's absolutely your last chance to plant some beets, some turnips, and some radishes. A lot of times they can produce really quickly in about 30 to 60 days, but you need to get them in right now. Look at things like beans, snap beans, lima beans. Those will produce probably in about 60 days. Lima beans take a little bit longer, maybe on the 85 day range. It's also warm enough now that we can plant some vining crops like cantaloupe, watermelon, winter and summer squash. Think about growing some corn, cucumbers, some Swiss chard, and there are a lot of warm season greens that you can get planted. Malabar spinach, New Zealand spinach, and amaranth. There's a few things that you can plant right now that you need to plant from starts. Little starter plants. They've been seeded probably about six to eight weeks earlier. So they're at a different point in the season. Eggplant, peppers, and tomatoes. I know you love those tomatoes. You need to go find some plants in a local nursery. All of those that I just listed can be planted right now. And many of them can be planted throughout the month of April. There are a few things that you really need to wait for it to get good and hot to plant. Okra, southern peas, and sweet potatoes. But you really need to wait until it's nice and hot before you start growing them. So I realize some of you out there might not have a raised garden bed or a large scale planting area. Maybe you've got a windowsill or a balcony or something like that. Even if you just want to start small, things like microgreens. You might have some leftover seeds for cool season crops like kale, broccoli, collards, even some of the Asian greens. You can start a little pot of those inside, grow you some microgreens. That's going to give you something nutritious that you can harvest in probably two to three weeks. Likewise, you can also try to sprout some seeds. You know, they make these proprietary lids for your sprouting jar, and that's going to go onto a standard mason jar in about 
five to seven days, maybe sooner, your seeds are gonna sprout. A lot of times you're looking at things like alfalfa, sunflower, fenugreek. A lot of these seed packages are marketed for sprouting, but if you have some seeds on hand, you can probably use those to sprout in a jar. Use what you have or use whatever you can find. I'm gonna drop some links in the descriptions below the video, so you wanna check that out, but there are a lot of great seed companies out there. Right now, they're getting a surge in ordering, a really high demand, and that's delaying their shipment, and a lot of the popular varieties will be going out of stock. Nonetheless, I just want you to be aware that there are a wide range of seed companies out there that can help meet your needs. Some of my favorites are Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, Southern Exposure Seeds, High Mowing, Renee's Garden, Botanical Interests, and Seed Savers Exchange. Those are all really great high quality seeds. A lot of them have some unique heirloom varieties, some USDA organic certification. I just really love these seed companies. Growing your own food in a windowsill, a raised garden bed, or on a larger scale requires a lot of patience, perseverance, and perspective. It's one of the most rewarding acts that you can do, and it will manifest a healthier and happier quality of life for you and your family. I think that's it. Bang. How we doing? How's this look? And uh, almost paradise. There it is. Check out some of these other awesome gardening videos on my channel. You can grow your own food. Keep it organic.